big light bulbs. That's what Davidenko Love does best. Team. He's a great counter puncher. He just moves very well. Built like a greyhound. There's not much of him. <laughs> Davidenko having a quick look, but that was spot on. 15 on. Straight down the tee, not a big serve, but a very effective delivery. Fifteen thirty. I guess the fluorescent uh, shoelaces go up to a little bit of. Uh, Stuff on the shirt and then up to the headband. And he's got the same colour on the headband, the swoosh on the headband. There it is. 30 I thought yellow was the colour this year. Yes, uh, most of the other shirts from other manufacturers have got yellow. Good concentration. Look at the eye on the ball there and the head still as he makes. Look, still there. Both these players played a fair clip, so there won't be a lot of uh, strolling around between points here. Davidenko plays pretty quickly. Roger likes to get on with it as well. Game Federer. Not 100% convincing, but he got the job done. That's the main thing. Gets on the board first. First game. Davidenko, when he first came out of the scene, being a, a man from Russia, was seen as a very stern character. Yep. But he won a lot of fans, especially here, Fred, with a couple of his media conferences a few years ago where he showed that he's a bit of a character. Oh, yes, he's got a great sense of humour. And uh, uh, I got to know him when he was playing well and I used to MC some events over just prior to Wimbledon. And he used to play in the event and you get to talk to him and have lunch and interview him and so forth. And uh, he's got a very dry sense of humour. And uh, he, as you said, he's quite a character and popular with the boys. That's, uh, you know, it's good if you're popular with the fellows in the locker room. Well, you know, you can get Nicolai around the Daddy two without too many trouble. And everybody used to look on uh, the schedule on the board when the draw came out to see who had to play Devodenko because he was tough then. 15 love. As often happens early in Federer's matches, the, the backhand, he falls off the backhand, shanks a lot of backhands in the early games. Forty love. The last time Davidenko made the quarterfinals here in 2010, it was Roger Federer who actually ended his run in a four-setter.
14, 15. Last time they played just last year was in uh, Rotterdam. Played on a hard court, semi finals there, and Federer won it in straight sets. He lost the first set, had to come back and win the next two. Gavadenko, you can hear him grunting and groaning. He's throwing everything. All the body weight's 14, going into 13. that stuff. And Federer is just back there absorbing it. And then he finally gets this one and finds the angle and just enough pace on it off the line. It zips. Too good. And he gets such speed on his ground shots without apparent effort. It's so smooth and rhythmical. Game, Davidenko. Well, like Federer before him, Davidenko giving up a couple of points. One game on. But no real issues as he settles into the match with his first service game. He's a dad now, Roger Federer, a very proud dad. Twin daughters. Nikolai's a dad too, and he's yep. only a new dad. Yep. He has a daughter... Katarina, who was born on the 17th of April last year. Let's second, second service. service. Now he knows where he's going to be spending his $15.33 million that he's earned during his career. Love 15. Very much an underrated 15 on. shot that one, the Federer serve. Again, down, that's the second time he's gone right down the tee on the ad court for the ace. Just grabbed the outside of the line. 30-15. His fastest serve for the championship so far, Roger Federer, has been 208 kilometres an hour, which incidentally was the same speed that Serena Williams served this afternoon. Oh. On match point. Good kick serve, that one. You'll see quite a few of those this evening from Federer, I believe. That one to the uh, ad court. Jumps up very high. Davidenko doesn't really play that one that well. Uh, he likes it around about waist, chest high. Anything up around his head, he doesn't like. Mm. Right. 40, 30. Four unforced errors in the match already for Roger. Well, Davidenko makes you play a lot Jeez. of balls. Federer's going to have to be uh, on his game. He was a little scrappy the other night, the other afternoon, but uh, tonight he's going to have to be very much aware of Davidenko's abilities to stay in the point. Advantage Federer. He beat Benoit Pair in three sets, two, four, and one, in an hour and 23 minutes. He got a bit of a freebie in the last set, but really had to fight it, especially in that second set the other day. Game, Federer. So Federer taken to deuce, but manages to hang on. Everyone's holding serve early on. It's 2-1. Federer leads two games to one. And a good service game there from uh, Federer when he got into trouble as he seems to be able to do more often than not these days when he gets into strife, comes up with a good serve. 
There's those laces, Fred. Yeah. And now uh, you can see he must have different. There's the four Australian Opens at uh, Grand Slam. You've got to have uh, got to have won a Grand Slam to get those on your shoes. And he's got four of them. That's just for the Australian. And then he'll go to Paris and he'll have a few more. And as you were saying the other night, they tried to get them all on the one <laughs> shoe. That'd be a bit no. of a problem. You'd have to have shoes like Bozo the Clown. That two feet long. We're into the settling in period of the match here at Rod Laver Arena, and that's exactly what a lot of the crowd is going to be doing. You know, this is their first opportunity, isn't it? There's no uh, sit down on after the first game of any set in the match, and so two games to one, the first chance to get in. Those that arrived a little bit late. Seats quickly, please. And, Thank uh, you. Uh, Jerry Armstrong asked them to take seats quickly, but you can have a quick view around the stadium here, and there are people walking everywhere, and that's just not going to happen. So the players will take a little bit of extra time. And yeah. stand under that baking sun. Well, at least they're in shade, but they're still feeling the effects of it. 40 degrees, and look at those people up in that there part of Rod Laver the Arena. The court, please. Thank you. On the eastern side. Yeah, there's a lot of fans sort of uh, fluttering in the breeze there, waving, trying to keep themselves a little cool. Love 15. 15 on. Oh. Federer really trying to take the ascendancy when he gets a second serve from Davidenko. He was standing a good metre inside the baseline. That second delivery at just 145 kilometres an hour. Another pretty good rally from Davidenko. It's the backboard. He's keeping Federer. This time he just goes for a little bit too much. Hasn't managed to win it yet, Davidenko. Federer's had half a dozen of them already. He just keeps on hitting it back at you. Well, that's the longest rally so far and a very entertaining one. 26 shots the rally. 30, 40. Brings up the first break point here. Davidenko has good technique and he absorbs the pace from Federer, but eventually it got to have him a little bit off balance for the last shot, one that he missed. So an opportunity now for the number two seed. thing that Federer can be sure of 
most on most occasions, Jesus. Davidenko is not going to come into the net. So if he can get caught wide, Federer can just throw that ball up and keep it deep again, and knowing full well he'll stay in the point. But Davidenko, good solid rally again there. Mr. Davidenko challenging the call on the left baseline. The ball's called in. Yeah, I think it was good. Davidenko was on top of it. Yeah, yeah. wishful thinking. Advantage, Federer. Mr. Davidenko has two challenges remaining. Little change Jeez. with the serve there from Davidenko, just a little three quarter one. He's got one down at 202, that one was at 149. Thanks, you play that extra ball all the time. It's a good serve. Mixed his serve up well, as you mentioned, last Advantage, 149, Davidenko. that one 197. And a game point. turn out to be quite a noteworthy hold down a break point the Russian keeps his composure two games all. and keeps his serve to all well he moves so well to that one there that forehand kept him in the point and then Federer going for a little too much but uh, scrambles very well Davidenko he'd go through a pair of shoes a match I would think the way he runs around Love 15. Well, that's a rarity. You won't see that a lot. Federer did not serve a double fault in his first round match. And if you get to the end of the match and he served more than three, then you're seeing something that doesn't happen very often. Davidenko missed that, but he's come out with a game plan where he's just going to tee off. And he's uh, not just passively moving, trying to move the ball from side to side. He's going after them. And so we've had some pretty good heavy hitting here to start off with. Thirty fifteen. Thirty-all. Scrambles again, and Federer plays the drop shot. Not well executed, halfway up the net. It's an excellent serve, curving away from Davidenko. Forty, thirty. Only 181, so it's close to 30 kilometres an hour shy of his quick one yeah last service game the same thing and got the 30 all came up with the goods two first serves same thing again here good return davidenko is picking that one down Jeez. the middle very well on the ad court
Advantage, Federer. It's a high number of aces early on for Roger. Let's first service. He didn't get out too wide, and Davidenko Jeez. stood back on the return. Look how far back he is. And then he hits that roundabout chest high and just smacks it down the line. 136k, that winning backhand. And that was off a serve that was 137. And the Federer is all business tonight. He knows yeah, he's in for a fight. Federer. Davidenko's only hit the one winner, but that's where he keeps spitting the balls back, spitting them back, and you make errors. Let's first service. Federer's hit eight winners, but uh, going for broke, he's committed 12 unforced errors. Deuce. Advantage, Federer. Federer's first serve percentage, very acceptable at the moment, 76%. And on top of that, Davidenko has only been able to put 58% of returns into play. On the line. Game Federer. He's been tested a few times on serve Roger Federer in his three service games, but somehow he's managed to manufacture the hold Federer as the great leads. players often three do. Games. Three two. Follow the top stories of the week. The interview has generated a worldwide reaction. There are reports Armstrong will become an informant. Join our experts as we analyze the fallout live from 1 p.m. Tired of all that chomping and slicing? It's such hard work and takes forever. Well, now there's a faster, better way with Slice-O-Matic. It lets you slice, slice, slice your prep time in half. Watch, just tap the Easy Glide handle and rock solid potatoes are sliced with ease. Great for scalloped potatoes. Tap again and slice an entire onion in seconds. No odors, no tears. Adjust the dial, and you've got uniform slices of fruits and vegetables, thick or thin. But it's not just for slicing. Add the deluxe julienne blade and chop mountains of carrots, celery, and parsnips. Great for soups and stews. So call Global Shop Direct or go online now and order the all-new Slice-O-Matic for the low price on your screen with today's special TV offer. But wait, order right now and we'll send you a second Slice-O-Matic absolutely free. That's a $59 value free when you order right now. So call or go online now and take advantage of our special buy one get one free offer today well the weather in melbourne might be exceedingly hot roger hasn't quite got to that stage yet with his play but he still has his nose in front by virtue of serving first and holding his serve as nikolai has done so far three games to two in this opening set bernard tomic waiting in the third round in a couple of days time 24 minutes well beyond the time that Novak Djokovic took to win the first set of his match last night. Pretty impressive Djokovic last night, wasn't, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Very sharp. And if Here's anything, the players, please. Thank you. it's hard to believe that his return of serve could get better. He had a clean winner last night off a serve that was 223 kilometres an hour. Quite remarkable. Yeah, Federer just waiting for the folks that are in his line of vision. First four or five rows behind Davidenko, right behind him there. Oh, 
That's the type of tennis he's going to have to play to win, Federer. Love 15. On. You mentioned that Rogers' first serve percentage was very acceptable early in the match, 73%. Davidenko exceeding that, up at 78%. Huh. Second winner of the match. 30-15. Stepping into it. It's all set up by the serve. And then the big forehand. Look at the defensive mode from Federer. And then he finds the angle with that two-fister. Davidenko was able to get himself out of a hole in his previous service game and he's forced to do likewise here. Davidenko took a little bit extra time there. You heard Jerry Armstrong in the toss of the coin say that the time limit had not changed with as far as the uh, Grand Slams are concerned. ATP tournaments in Brisbane and Sydney, they had a 20-second time limit between points. Here at the Grand Slams is 25 seconds. And we haven't had any violations that I can uh, remember this week so far. Oh, and a little come on from Roger as well. Knows it's go time now. Advantage, Federer. Winner number 11 brings up break point number four for this first set. Advantage Federer. Davidenko's movement there as well. He's pretty fleet-footed around the back of the court. Ah! 
Third time lucky it is for Roger Federer in the sixth game, and he's the first one to make a statement. Federer leads four games to two. Not a bad seat in the house anywhere here in Rod Laver Arena. 15,000 fans packed in. And they're fans with fans trying to keep cool. <laughs> fans fanning fans. Yeah. 15 love. Davidenko having a little peek, but satisfied. Fred, being an Aussie boy and being used to the heat, when you were in the height of your career and you came out and it was a blisteringly hot day, did you feel as though you had an advantage against people from other countries? Pretty much so, yeah. Oh, I think that that did as well with our Davis Cup ties there. We played uh, always... Mr. Hopman had us in great physical shape when we played. They were challenge rounds in those days. Started on Boxing Day, day after Christmas for three days. And you'd play against the nations that had come in from Europe like ten days beforehand. We'd been out there for eight weeks. Conditions are pretty hot though then as well. You played uh, in Brisbane, got very warm down here, Melbourne, Adelaide, anywhere. In Australia, this time of the year, you're likely to get 40 degree temperatures, aren't you? 15. A very comfortable yeah. service game for Federer as he puts the foot down and gets to within one game of securing this first set. Ball change, please. New balls. Federer leads five games to two, first sets. An excellent crowd as they've had right throughout. The championships here started on Monday with record crowds and, and boy they've flocked in and now that uh, you can bet that if uh, Federer gets through this one and plays Bernard Tomic that'll be uh, a huge match on prime time Saturday night. Speaking of the crowds it wouldn't come as any great surprise if the crowd was down a bit today simply because of the, the brutality heat. of yeah. the heat. Watching Carolyn Wozniacki on High Sense Arena earlier today, and the stadium was about one tenth full. It was just, it was simply too hot. too hot for people to sit in the sun. Everyone will be pretty pleased to see the sight of the setting sun. Hopefully, it might make a little bit of a difference in the temperatures, but it won't be an enormous difference. It can still be mid to high 30s here as the early evening progresses. Match started in 40 degrees just after seven o'clock in the evening. New balls, Davidenko serving down a break, 2-5. Federer finding Love the range 15. on the return at the moment. He's a, he's a great front runner, Federer. He certainly is finding the range on the return. He's now got 82% of returns into play. That is a very high number. Davidenko is no slouch. He can get it up there around the 200 mark. Fifteen, thirteen. 
30 all. Again, terrific defensive skills from Davidenko. Thirteen forty brings up a set point now for Federer. Not exactly what you'd call a clinical display so far, but very effective nonetheless from the world number two. Fred Stolle mentioned that great record that he's got going. The last time he didn't reach at least the quarterfinals in a Grand Slam was at Roland Garros 2004, where he went out in the third round. Unbelievable record, is it? Well, in any sport, that is just about untouchable at the top level. Federer puts the pressure on and caught Davidenko's eye. Federer. Crash the ball is good. Yeah. Right up in the corner. Good overrule from Jerry Armstrong. Yeah, Federer didn't challenge. Bad luck for Davidenko. They replay the point. Let first service. And it's still set point. I mean, the correct call would have been at Juice. Juice. Amazing, just watch it, watching the effort that's put in from both players. Whereas Federer just glides across the baseline, Davidenko is working, just working so hard to get in position to make the effort to do what he's doing. Advantage, Davidenko. Well, Davidenko threw in a three-quarter pace serve. And, yes. Uh, Federer anticipated that. 153k, that one. Watch where Federer is when he hits it. Inside that baseline, bang, straight down the line. Oh. Advantage, Davidenko. Good. Yeah. Mr. Davidenko is challenging the call on the centre service line. The umpire ducking as he made the call. Yeah, I think Federer feels it's good. Yeah, just enough. Game, Davidenko. You call to Fred, just a couple of millimetres, but 
Davidenko once again sees off break Federer points five games to three. and forces Roger Federer to serve out the set himself. Good effort there from Davidenko to save those set points. He's, he's working very hard. Only five points the difference. Federer 37 points, Davidenko 32. 15 long. The big difference in the stats category is the winners. Yep. 16 to Federer and 4 to Davidenko. Again, on the other side of the coin, though, Federer's made just on twice as many errors as Davidenko because he's been the one that's going for everything. Davidenko's just a counter-puncher. 30 love. Only just. Well, a couple of little dance steps there for Federer as he let that one go. That's uh, good judgment. And it brings up three more set points after a couple went begging in the previous game. Game and first set, Federer. And they mark it at 42 minutes. So the great man is on his way. Federer without right. Doing the atomic match. 14, 13. And as Fred said, an important hold to get things going at the start of the second set. The Russian comes First up with one. Second set. When you were talking about those eggs, was that with Wilco this afternoon? Yes, it was. Yeah. Well, he'd remember that because he used to he eat the here. eggs. Yeah. Here's the service direction for uh, Roger Federer and how he's mixed it up there. The ace is in red. He served a couple. Service direction out there wide. You can see a lot of the players on those first serves out wide to the deuce court. And he's mixed it up. Gone down the tee. That's his favourite serve. The second serve, he's kicked out wide. But the aces, out wide. Look at them both on the line. And uh, all those aces are very, very close to the line. Obviously, they have to be. But uh, well served for Roger Federer in set one. That's again the plan. Out wide to the forehand. Open up the court. 15 love. Go for it. Well, we just showed you how accurate those aces were. There's another one on the paint. Add that to it. Half a dozen now. Forty love. Easy service came here for Federer, throws it right back at uh, Davidenko. Hasn't had too many easy service games. No. 40 15. Here's Roger's wife, America. Rodney George Laver presented him with the trophy. Rodney will be out here again this year, as will Roy Emerson. The Roy Emerson, the special guest, representing 50 years since uh, he won the, his, uh, won the Australian Open, or the Australian Championships, as it then was. Fifteen long. Fifteen on. I think that respect for the game of tennis is something, it's a part of why he's been endeared to the public. Mm -hmm. 
they respect him for his respect of the sport. Thirty fifteen. Oh. Fourteen fifteen. Try to step in there and do something a little different. Davidenko, but there was the spin that caught him, the miss hit. Ah, game, Federer. Early going yet, but Federer has only lost two points on serve in the second set. Federer leads three games to one. Last night, Novak Djokovic went through the second set, losing one point on his serve. Well, how about today in the match against uh, Tomic and... Uh, Daniel Brands. Daniel Brands in the third set got to six all, and that's six service games, and he never lost one point. Wow. On serve to get to six all. Then he lost two in the tiebreaker and lost the tiebreaker, and then Tomic went on to win the match. Unbelievable display of serving. Fifteen. That's becoming a very good return these days with the top players, particularly if you've got a bit of stick on it, as Federer did there, straight down the middle, straight at the uh, server. Uh, he doesn't have time to recover from the finishing of the service motion. Fifteen on. Fifteen, thirteen. He was very competitive early on in the match, Davidenko, but now it seems as though the power of Federer is starting to roll over the top of him. Thirty all. Talk about the time the server has, Fred. We looked at that uh, graphic a couple of nights ago where it showed us that there is about 0.6 of a second between when the server hits it and when the receiver has to hit. Has to, yep. So double that, and you've got about 1.2, 1.3 seconds when you have to play your second shot in the rally. Let second service. Crowd always likes the... Between the legs shot. <laughs> uh. well, that's that the one, one thing that uh, David Anko gets sucked 13, into 14. at times when he plays somebody like Federer. That's why it's 17 and 2 because Federer to start off with, if we have a look at that fancy shot, that'll be on the highlight reel. He tries to out hit Federer. Well, you've got to try and use Federer's pace. You can't out hit the man. Well done. Not a natural volley, Davidenko. Does a good job there. Deuce. Sneaks in. You can see two hands on the racket. He keeps two hands on the racket till he plays this volley. There he goes. And then he takes one hand off as he finishes. Advantage, Davidenko. Jamming Federer up with the body serve. So yet again, he puts himself in a position where he can see off some break points. Cheers. Oh. Oh. 
Slice backhand here just comes underneath it a little bit too much, pushes it long. That's by far his quickest of the match. That one down at 210. Advantage, Davidenko. Well, no, Federer hasn't got one up that quick as yet. The Russian scrapping hard knows that if he goes down a double break then you can just put the second set in the book. Oh, Federer guessed right. Advantage, Davidenko. You can see Federer moves one way and then comes back. Good anticipation. Seems to be at his best with the back to the wall. It's probably a situation that he might have to get used to, but another good hold by Nikolai Davidenko. 15 all. It's got a few thunderbolts down tonight. 30-15. Almost 208. Four aces. Federer's got seven of them. Thirty all. The Davidenko player box. Eduard, his brother, is the coach. Eduard's son is a pretty good tennis player, travels around 40, with him 30. basically as the hitting partner for Nikolai. Game, Davidenko. Pretty convincing service game from the Russian. Ball change, please. He's still down that break though. New balls to come in the eighth game of the second Federer set. Leads four games to three. Second set by one set to love. Hammered down, uh, you see there, he's hammered down a couple of big serves, 210k. And there's not much of Davidenko. It just shows you that he's got good rhythm and timing on the serve to get that sort of pace. Let's have a look at the serve. It's very effective. Super slow mo. Get, look at that right shoulder. Good shoulder turn. Straight arm, that left arm straight. You hold it up there until you're about ready to go. And look at that again, throwing the head of the racket up and out towards the target. Beautifully done with our cameraman there, and he likes it to get that eye following the ball. That's an ace down the middle at 210. So his last two service games, he's had 210. He had a 209 in that previous game that we've just seen too. Really got the timing right on the serve. He's going to need everything to go right from here. Ball kids do a fabulous job. It's only when we look at things like this, where we see the new balls coming out, that we realise that the ball kids are out there. Yeah, that's a good, good ball kids you very rarely notice. And they train a lot. A lot of our top Australian players over the years started off as ball kids when they get keen on the game. The biggest Love thrills 15. for me. I used to ball boy Ken Roswell doesn't like me when I tell the story because I used to ball boy for Ken Roswell and he was a boy wonder at 17 and I was 14 and uh, 
and I had the great thrill of playing with Ken later in the career and winning Thank a few services. Grand Slam doubles titles with him. So it's amazing how the worm turns. How did you feel the first time you went out and played them with Ken Rosewell? Was it a bit of a surreal experience? Oh, well, I did that just before I turned pro and Muscles took me out and gave me a couple of games and then you thought you could go and play with him and then you get on the tour and then he gave you nothing. <laughs> oh, he was a great player. Over the longevity of our sport, there's none better than Kenneth 15, Robert Rosewall. Grand Slam's 20 years apart. And that's where Federer knows all that. Federer is a great student of the sport. This is not a good volley. Punches this one way long. Very casual. Let's first service. As you mentioned, Peter, just when you think Davidenko gets a sniff at 15.30, in comes the big serve. And it's generally followed by another one, too. Davidenko looking up to his brother, just shrugging the shoulders, saying, what... Can't do much when he serves like that. Well done. Take that. Didn't want to be blinking with the speed of the ground strokes in that. Juice. Great return. And then a half volley into the open court as hard as he could hit it. Well, that's uh, worth a look. Federer. It's pretty close. He may as well. Jerry Armstrong saying, I'm satisfied. Nikolai takes his word for it. Oh. Replay indicated that it might have been worth a challenge. Oh. That one... Well over the baseline. Mr. Davidenko challenging the ball on the left baseline. <laughs> I think he's left it one too late. Yeah, he's a point <laughs> too late, I think. Uh, this one way up. Uh, can't take him with you, but it's long. Game Federer. Crowd love it when you throw in a challenger too. And it's, it's well documented, Mr. well known that uh, Roger Federer does not like the challenge system. And he's not very good at it himself. overcooked that several times tonight just hearing you say that Roger's no good at uh, challenging Fred which has been well documented over the years it almost gives hope to us mere mortals that there's something in tennis that Roger's not that good at <laughs> He'd love to get it done and dusted right here, Federer, so that he'll have the advantage of serving first in the uh, third set, which could turn out to be the deciding set, the way things are looking. Let's... Well done. Thirty fifteen. 
This one back in behind Federer, right in the corner. Vintage Federer at that point did not so give Davidenko a moment to recover. Steps under this one, moving in when Davidenko's a little off balance for the outright winner. has had plenty of practice at defending break points as we've mentioned a couple of times nine times he's been down break point only twice has Federer been able to take advantage of it though now this one's a set point yep Davidenko, on the other hand, has not been able to arrive at the stage where he's been on the good end of a break point. Let first service. Advantage, Federer. This, this time Nikolai's turn to come up with the big serve. Wasn't that quick, but it was well placed. So is that Ooh. one ninety eight advantage, Davidenko down the middle. He served as many aces as Federer now, seven apiece. Federer Jeez. anticipating that second serve. Brilliant return. Two metres inside the baseline. Took the serve on the rise. It was back to Davidenko very quickly. Got pretty good rhythm on that one, Davidenko. Advantage, Davidenko.
game, Davidenko. Well, he's done a remarkable job of fighting himself out of a corner. Now he's been down 11 break points. Rogers only capitalised twice. But in a moment, the number two seed will be serving for a two sets to love lead. Yeah, pretty impressive. Federer would not be too happy with his conversion rate on break points. But uh, Davidenko has got some good deliveries in there. That's another look at the service motion. Good shoulder turn, keeps that left arm up until he's ready to strike. Changes the grip on the forehand. Sammy Weston steps into it. And David Eko, one of those players that exhales when he hits the ball. They tell me that that is supposed Time. to give you extra power. I could never figure out why, but and I'm not a, up on that sort of stuff, but we never knew anything about that. Sports uh, mechanists and psychologists and everything, they analyse everything about the game these days. But you don't need to be one of those to know that this guy is one of the greatest of all time. And he doesn't breathe out when he hits. Thank you, Lazarus. Thank you. He breathes when he hits. But serving for the set. Let second service. Second service. You wouldn't think it's likely to happen, but he can't afford to be casual. It is just one break. Oh, what a close. That's a good lesson for you at home, folks. When you see that slice come up in the air, just accelerate a little bit more here. He's got Davidenko on the run, slices it, and look where Federer is. He closed in, you can see, very quickly now. He increases the pace, watches the ball. He's about half a metre from the net when he knocks that off. 30 love. Forty Getting the job done just the way you'd probably want to see it done as he tries to set up this date with Bernard Tomic. Federer leads two sets to love after one hour and 24 minutes. Yeah, well, I think uh, the way he's played this match against Davidenko, I think this is the way that he will go into the match against Bernard Tomic. He will attack Tomic and, uh, and he will certainly test out how Tomic's fitness is the back of the court. This is the second set summary here. Both players serving well. Look at that. Federer, 84% first serves in. When that happens, you're in trouble. 10 winners to 13 unforced errors. Davidenko has been going for a few. 17 unforced errors. But uh, a pretty good set from both players. Break points. Federer only one out of four attempts. He will have to uh, have a look at that. He's got two for 11 for the match. And But at this stage, the 42 minutes that set took and it's been uh, a good practice run for Federer. He's had to keep his mind on the job, knowing full well 
that he's up against a pretty formidable opponent as we check out some of the highlights okay, from the second set. And this was the one where there's just history. You get too much caught. And that one, Davidenko right behind Federer. You can see if you, the, uh, the way Federer hits the ball with that very heavy topspin, how it dips right at the, at the finish of the... Look at that. Game. And that was second it for set. the second set. January on Nat Geo Wild. With the dawn of a new year comes the promise of new wonders. New challenges and new surprises. This January, follow your instincts to Nat Geo Wild. The 2013 Nat Cup, live only on Fox Footy. We used to call the matches a few years ago from down the bottom. Yes, in the bunker. In the bunker there, and, yeah. you could, it, and it was at court level, and that gave you, it was tough to see the other end of the court, but you had a great look at how that ball dipped with the very heavy topspin right at the very last minute into the corners and on the line. It was, it was a, a good spot to watch from. The trouble is you couldn't see the other end of the court. Yeah, but what you could see in that circumstance too, Fred, was the anguish and... Uh, just the looks on the players' faces. You could see that coming as soon as the Love 15. That ball didn't get too deep from Davidenko. Federer hasn't played a great many slices. He's gone after the ball. He's had a good repertoire of Shots, good variety tonight. Love 30. This is not what Davidenko wants, an early breakdown in the third. This would be history. Yeah, should this happen, you could see this set disappearing very quickly despite his great ability to come back from adversity. Full court. wonder how much fight he's going to have left Love in him 14. now. No, he's looking at the racket as though the ball's flying off the racket, but I think it's, it's more due to Federer than the racket. Pace of shot from Federer. He's found the range. Break point number 12 for the match, 13 and 14 to follow if needed. Oh, not needed, a freebie. Uh, going for the big second serve, not on. Well, that's very meek compared First to what we've Perfect seen sets. from him in the rest of the match, and it might be an indicator of what's to come over the next 25 minutes or so. Well, again, there uh, we said that uh, he's worried about the strings and uh, Davidenko on the change over change rackets. A lot of the players with this, they bounce it between their legs. Oh, seems to just come up in their hands. Uh, they must do it a lot at practice. I'd have to go and chase it. He did that a lot as a young man, yeah, Federer. I remember go. first seeing him um, at Sydney in about mm -hmm. 2001 when he did it a lot throughout the match. Love 15. And that was in a time, Fred, where he was a little impetuous on the court and a uh, little topsy-turvy in his concentration throughout matches. Yeah, it used to be the forehand that took him a while to get going in the early days.
Well, that's a good return there. One of the few times he's been able to step in, take it on the rise. Love 30. Create the angle. We've seen any number of instances of how Roger answers when he's behind in the count. It just shows you how close things get in this game. It's love 30 and this one misses by a fraction down the line. Otherwise, he's got three break points to get back even. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, you can see Davidenko just shake his head there. This shot here is a good approach. He moves in looking for a volley. And that ball's nearly behind him. And all it was was a forearm jolt. Snap of the wrist. And he creates that sort of power. Second serve. Forty thirty. I think he wants to get off the court, Federer, and boy, he chased after that last one. Yeah. This one here, this wasn't coming back. And there you go again. Down love thirty. He shifts into another gear. Well, he's a couple of centimetres away from being down love 40. Yep. And when that didn't happen, and they just... Uh, foot goes on the pedal. This is well executed. Got his man way behind the baseline. He hasn't played too many drop shots. That one was played to perfection. There it comes underneath. What's cuts underneath the ball? Sideways, a bit of side spin on it. 15 love. Is that all you'll get from Federer? I, uh, it's probably about as close about to a tantrum as he gets. <laughs> Lifts up a little bit. There you go. Forty love. Challenge. Challenge. <laughs> Mr. Davidenko challenging the call on the left service line. Well, I think Roger's looking there saying, well, it's supposed to be done in a timely manner. As it turns out, he's set fire to one. Game, Davidenko. Davidenko broken to love in his first service game of the third set. Holds to love in his second. And maybe too little, too Federer late. Leads two games to one. Third set by two sets to love. And Mr. Davidenko has 
two challenges remaining. A waste of a challenge there because I think Roger was ready to do it the, uh, as the Federer return strike point. The uh, slice 28% of the time and the top spin the rest of it 72%. They're the yellow one so you can see he's come over the top a lot more on the return of serve, the Davidenko. And that's the, uh, the the red ones where he's played the slice. See, most of them played out on the ad court or the deuce court when he's had to stretch for that backhand. He stretched out on a good serve and he's tried to play the slice to get the ball back into play. Otherwise, he's tried to come over the top of it. It's a different atmosphere uh, when the players sit down to back in your day, Fred, where everything was nice and quiet. <laughs> well, we weren't allowed to sit down. So you just changed ends at that stage and there was not a lot of television and uh, just when you got the semi-finals or finals you did press conferences in the Grand Slam so it's a huge difference. The game has uh, just a, always been a worldwide game but now it is a huge sport and uh, the Grand Slams are getting better and better and larger and larger. Television has been the mainstay of that obviously. Love 15. This one tries to be very cute. Change the face of the racket, trying to slide it back the other way. Fifteen on. Well, he lost the dampener after that big swing on the return. It sort of uh, takes off, flies off the racket. Thirty fifteen. Well, that's been the source of his greatest frustration tonight, Davidenko. The number of balls that he's hit over the baseline. Federer leads three games to one. Fifteen. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you don't see that too often. Love. You see him run around and hit four hands, but not miss like that. He's in cruise control at the moment, though, Federer. Let's first service. Thirty fifty. Unforced error count now heads up to thirty three for the Russian, Federer having made more, going for more shots, naturally enough. Oh. Oh. 
30 all. Going for a little extra on that second serve, knowing that uh, the last time, even though Federer missed it, he ran round the serve and clocked that big forehand, missed it. But it just lets the server know that you can do that, and uh, he's a little worried Federer was going to do it again. So we find ourselves in very familiar territory. Thirty, forty. Here's the volley. It was a tough one down off the ankles and uh, played it very short. You can see Davidenko changed the grip to try and hook this one back, get underneath it, lift it, carry it over. Not successful. Deuce. Well, that's three of 13, and that was not a difficult return off a second serve. You can see Federer just stopped in his tracks. He wasn't, he didn't enjoy that at all. Is that any cause for concern, uh, that break point Davidenko. conversion rate, Fred? Or do you look at the other side of it and say, well, I'm creating so many of them? Oh, no, I think it is a cause of concern. I think that's the most important stat of the lot. Davidenko gets this one. And uh, no, I, uh, break points won and lost. Game, Davidenko. Mm -hmm. Well, he's been simply terrific in the way he's defended tonight. But unfortunately, he's done it. When he's already been in Federer a vulnerable three position. 3-2 Federer two up two sets, in the third. Paul Anacone, who's been with Federer for a number of years now, will have uh, noted that. And uh, I'm sure in the practice we'll mention that to him. It's just a matter of uh, tightening up the type of shot that you play. That last forehand was not a difficult one. He didn't go after it. Line judges changing their shifts now, as do the ball kids. They do about 45 minute shifts. Love the colours they have this year the burnt orange. Time. Down under in Australia, it's the start of the summer or middle of the summer. It's got a good feel about it. By my calculations, Nikolai Davidenko five times has been down break points in games and has held his serve. He's dropped his serve, of course, on three occasions. But it's been backs to the wall stuff from the veteran Russian. When I say veteran, he's exactly the same age as this man. 31 years of age. Well, Federer is becoming a veteran on the tour now as well. what a lot of the pundits are saying now you know you give Federer another three or four years Nadal 15 Murray's come through he's a little bit younger but they're 27 and same with the uh, Djokovic so they're looking for the youngsters the 20 year olds the Tomics the the Mitrofs to step it up a little bit and make their presence felt Oh, as if he could do it blindfolded. Forty love. Fascinating volley. This one, he runs straight through it. He doesn't stop, takes the stutter step. He just stops there and just gets out of the way of it. And... Oh. 
Game, Federer. Ball change, please. New Love balls. game. New ball's about to come out, so Roger will go and change the weaponry. Federer leads four games to two. He has the amazing ability and just displayed in that volley he played. 30-15. Federer. One game to go for Roger Federer, and he would like to get it done off Nikolai's serve if possible. Federer leads five games to three. Alleviate the possibility because we talked about that one break of serve. It means that you're always in a position where you can't get too comfortable. Love 15. Fifteen on. Well, Davidenko is not going to go away. To his credit, he's hung in there. And it looks as though it's going to be Federer going to have to serve this out once more. Game, Davidenko. That's exactly what the case is going to be. So Federer at times has looked a little jittery on serve tonight, so it's not quite done and dusted Federer yet. Leads five games to four. That's set by two sets to love. Been pretty consistent on serve though, Federer, but uh, Davidenko has had the top speed of the evening and one would never think that, but Federer has always been a case where he's very consistent. He gets it up around about 205, 200 to 205 K very consistently he doesn't go for the big bomber but he gets it in the corners and it's enough to open up the court for him and he's one game away from a third round match against australia's youngster bernard tomic and they've had a lot of publicity and they've been talking about that match right from the get-go of the championship starting here and it looks as though now it may be a reality and sometimes you build those matches up for days and days and it uh, doesn't work out the way you want it to. However, it, on paper it looks like being a great one. Time. Crowd settling in for what looks like it could be the last rites of this second round encounter. Now, Roger Federer, when I said he's looked jittery at times, it's probably, that's very unfair. He's been in situations where two or three times in the middle of games he's looked a little vulnerable and then he flicks the switch 
because Davidenko has never ever got to the stage of having a break point on Federer's serve. No, he's at 15.30 and 30 all, but uh, never a break point in uh, just on two hours of tennis. So it's been a pretty impressive performance from Federer, who first few games Davidenko was with him. But from two all, Federer got the early break, 4-2 in the opening set. Fifteen on. I like the attitude here from Davidenko. Not going to go into his shell and not going to go away. But there again, I don't think it's going to make much difference. 30-15. Great serving again from Federer. So on the stiflingly hot night in Melbourne, Roger Federer hasn't reached the extreme heat levels yet of his game. But by the look of it, 14, it's going to be generally workmanlike rather than spectacular in victory. Game and he finishes in appropriate fashion. Bernard Tomic waits on Saturday. Six four. This nation will be watching and many parts of the world will be as well. A brave Nikolai Davidenko bows out, but Federer does it again on Rod Laver Arena. He's made this court his own. Standing ovation for this guy and for Davidenko. They appreciate the fact that Davidenko hung in there right till the end, but uh, Federer, workman like, finished it off with an ace. And just a round of applause for Nikolai Davidenko, who was, I'm going to say, outclassed because you can never outclass Davidenko. He stays in there, he waves to the crowd, and a very gallant effort from him tonight. But he runs second, as he has done now, 18 of the 20 times that they've played. And it's Roger Federer who's done the damage. And let's find out what his impression was of that three sets win over Nikolai Davidenko as Roger speaks courtside with Jim Courier. Roger, you've been playing Nikolai for quite a long time. You're 18 and 2 against him. 18 and 2 against a player of that caliber. What is it about that matchup that works for you? Hello. Uh, uh, all right. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's a uh, can hear us. Um, well, it's, it's a tough matchup with uh, Nikolai. Um, he's, uh, he's a good player and uh, I know him since a very, very long time. And uh, I'm just uh, very, very happy it, it goes so well against him. Uh, it's nice seeing him playing better again. He had some difficulties over the last uh, couple of years, but he's had a great start to the season. So obviously it was a tough draw for both of us. And uh, it was, it's always a pleasure playing against him, regardless of his ranking. Uh, yesterday, uh, sorry, two days ago, when you played in the daytime, your daughters came out and they watched a little bit from over there. They weren't here tonight. Is, it, is this past their bedtime? Is that why they didn't come to watch Dad? No, they're here. They're, they're, some, no, they're sleeping. Um, they're supposed to be. Uh, but, you know, jet lag can be tricky, so, no, but they, uh, it's nice when they come out, but uh, obviously I didn't put them down tonight. Someone else did, you know, but I wish it was me. <laughs> We've gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of interest on Fango about your shoes. You have the new shoes. Um, are you involved in the design in this, or is this something where they just show up at your door and you wear them? No, they said, no, I have nothing to say at all. I mean, no, I'm kidding. I, <laughs> I, look, I, I like to play around a bit with colors. How many times can you do the blue and the red and the black and the white? So I thought, you know, maybe with a fresh start here, just straight open for a new year. I wore a pink shirt years back and it was a bestseller, so I'm happy. Uh, people like it so far. I don't know, but uh, I, I enjoy them to play around a bit. 
Uh, there, there's going to be some significant interest in your next match here locally going up against Bernard Tomic. He wasn't sure you were going to make the third round. You did. Congratulations. Your thoughts on, uh, on taking on the local hero here? Um, similar situation as last year. It's just a, a round earlier, I guess. Uh, it's nice seeing also Bernard playing better again. He had a rough end to the season last year, so he's obviously had a wonderful start this year. And I uh, hope he can keep it up and, you know, crack the, you know, the big rankings. So it's, it's going to be an exciting match. Uh, we had a good one last year. We played each other in Davis Cup as well, so we kind of know each other better this time around. And uh, I'm sure it's a tough match. Uh, everything else would surprise me. Yeah, what are the keys to the match for you? Uh, what's the key? Um, I guess I got to play tough and, um, you know, I don't mind the physical aspect, so maybe that's an advantage for me, I don't know, but uh, I'll try to, you know, play tough and fair and hopefully come through. I'll always play aggressive like tonight. Obviously, there's not that many rallies because Nikolai was doing the same thing, but I have the feeling we're going to maneuver each other around a bit more next time around, so we'll see a bit more finesse is my feeling. Well, we'll look forward to that match. Sorry about the microphone, everyone, but... We've done a lot of these interviews together. We've never had any mic problems, but it's brought us closer together. So I appreciate that. So, all right, we'll look forward to seeing you on Saturday. It's going to be a great match. Roger Federer, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, what a match in prospect it will be. Bernard Tomic and Roger Federer. Can't wait for that one already, Fred. No, most definitely, and there's been a lot said about it. Roger Federer, well, he's going to have his supporters here too because Bernard Tomic has come out and said some things that... Uh, uh, Roger Federer, gracious there. He said it's nice to see Bernard. He comes off a rough end of the last season. He's undefeated this season. But he said, well, we've played one another enough, and it's the same thing as last year, only probably a round earlier for him this time round. Thanks to Fred Stolly sitting beside us in the commentary box. Roger Federer signing some autographs after a strike sets victory over a brave Nikolai Davidenko. 6-3, 6-4, 6, -3, 6, -4, 6, -4, 6 -4 in one hour and 59 minutes. Uh, Roger, can you talk about your match coming up with Bernard Tomic? And um, you, how much of a different player do you think he is from the last time you played him? Uh, I mean, look, it's obviously the beginning of the season, so uh, you don't know how guys work in the off-season, where they've done it, um, who they've done it with, all that stuff, and obviously it's still early in the season. And uh, um, But of course it sets the trend, you know, to, to something, um, to something good usually if you do start well, gives you some momentum. Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess he's learned a lot in the last year. It's been a, been a you know, a a year of a younger player on tour, you know, I went through the same sort of thing, you know, ups and downs and playing on the big courts, playing on the smaller courts, um, playing against all the different opponents for the first time. So it's, uh, it's tricky, but uh, it's nice. He's been able to turn it around after a tough end of the year last year and it seems he's playing well. So um, obviously a difficult uh, matchup uh, in terms of, you know, early in the, in the tournament, but uh, I got to be ready, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the match. Is there any area in particular you think that he has improved to, to have the current winning streak that he's got? Um, well, I mean, I would think he's playing overall probably more consistent, you know, whatever that m might be. You know, it's really in the details, you know, it's really hard to pinpoint, it's hard to pinpoint one thing. Uh, but I think when you're younger, you know, you, you have tendency to improve really quickly. Um, and then it's just hard to maintain that, you know. So uh, uh, that's why I think it's really exciting being younger, you know, and, and feeling it as well. I don't want to say week by week. At his point now, he's been on tour for a few years. But um, in practice or in the matches, every match you play, you learn something. And he's already p passed that point a little bit. But, um, um, yeah, I would think he does everything a little bit better. Otherwise, he wouldn't have won a tournament. So. Uh, he, and I haven't seen that much, well, quite honestly, so it's hard for me to call. Going back to tonight's match, when you've got a head-to-head -head that goes back 10 years or so with the player, do you, do you become conscious of the things you can do now that you couldn't do two, five, eight years ago, uh, the, the way these matches are different? Against him in particular, you mean? Or? Against him in particular or against other players? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, life and tour has changed a lot personally for me, and then obviously on the court as well, like I mentioned, you know, I'm much more experienced today. I know what, what I can expect from myself in terms of uh, the uh, 
uh, my level of play uh, early on. Sometimes you just feel like you're going to come into this this day and you're just going to play, play awful or this matchup's horrible. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I know what to expect from myself. I'm much stronger today, uh, physically clearly. So I can always rely on that as well. Extend the rallies. Don't have to be worried about that. You know, whereas in the past people knew or thought, oh, if you go past two hours on Clagans, Federer, he'll, you know not get better from that point on, but you get weaker, you know, so that's something then I wanted to work on and make sure I have an aura where people actually thought the other way, I was going to get stronger after two hours and, and the longer the match went, it's going to be my favour, so that's the kind of mindset you're going to have in practice and that's why I went to work and I guess became the player I am today. So you feel stronger now than in the years when you were winning three slams, five, six years ago? Well, I mean, I would hope I'm a better player today, you know, but obviously things have changed around a lot. Uh, strings, rackets, um, court speed, uh, opponents. So uh, obviously I came through in an era where I had to base, uh, base my game, you know, against, you know, Sampras, Agassi, uh, those kind of guys, you know, and not the, the road runners, you know, they came at the same time with me, you know, but. Uh, Courts were faster then, so it was more, you know, absorbing the pace and also creating something with it. Now uh, it's much different. It's much easier to find angles. So then, obviously, over time, I also had to adjust my game a bit. Um, so I'm, I'm happy I was able to and find a way and be successful in for a long period of time. Do you feel intimidated early with your aura over a young bloke when they come through? Well, yeah, maybe yeah, the maybe. first time you played them, but. Well, it was the first time. I think Davis Cup was the first time around, right? And he took a set of me there, so he wasn't too impressed. I think there's certain characters and certain players who have a, um, an easier time playing against, uh, you know, good players. I was one of those as well who came up and. Okay, in '98, I didn't believe I was going to beat Agassi in Basel, but um, uh, I believed I could maybe hang with him, you know, for a bit, and I did. You know, I won five games, and then six months later, I beat. Um, Moya in Marseille, and he was four in the world, and two months later he was number one in the world. You know, so I was also a big believer that I could win. And then there's other players who, you know, are much more overwhelmed by an occasion like that. So, to me, he seems more of a guy who who likes to be on the center court. He likes playing the top guys and feels he already belongs there. So um, I think it's going to make it easier for him to play. You said out on the court that physically you felt you could have an advantage over him. How, how do you use that? Is it in terms of sort of moving him around the court, or your power of shot, or what do you sort of? No, I mean, look, uh, I've. So much more experienced than him that I've been in over a thousand. Last year I reached my thousands match on tour. So that's what I meant, you know. I know how hard a five setter can be. I know um, how intense a night session can be and all these things. So whatever, you know, that means, you know, length of rally, length of match, uh, intensity. Um, I've been there and that, that could potentially help me, but it could potentially also not help me. So. We'll see how it goes, you know, but he's done a really nice job today, for instance, in the heat. Um, he's also played uh, at night already, I think his first match was at night, right? So he's, he's used to that as well, so I don't have a big advantage over in, in this.